welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you guys are back here. Today's video has been highly requested because you don't know already I am in Erasmus in Turkey and a lot of people have asked me how can they apply to Erasmus, what papers do we need, everything else. So I'm gonna make this video to put all the details in here and after this video you're gonna know exactly how to apply, how to get to the spot exactly the one that you want in Erasmus and everything else that you need. And also guys before I go on don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to support me and I want to also say thank you very much to the 600 first subscribers that are here so I really appreciate the support and don't forget to like this video as well and now let's continue with the Erasmus video. What type of Erasmus are there? There's two, there's SMP and SMS which means student mobility studies and student mobility placement. The difference between them is that the placement one I already made a video about it, I'm gonna link it right here, very short. It is basically a two month internship that you can do outside of the country that you study in, in a hospital or a private clinic so it's basically like a summer practice. But the one we're gonna talk about in today's video it's student SMS which is student mobility studies that means that you can go for one semester or even more one year or two in another country to study in a different university than yours also I got questions about how long can you stay in Erasmus but this you should check with your university because depending on what you're studying it is different but as far as I know for general medicine and for dentistry you are allowed to go to up to two years first of all how long can you leave you can go for half a year which means a semester or for two semesters you cannot go if you're a first, second or sixth year. Who can sign up for it? You can sign up in your third year and in your fourth year. Okay, very big question. Most asked question that I get is when can we apply? Again, I'm gonna have to say that you have to check the website all the time constantly. I'm gonna also link down below all the websites and all the links that you need for UMFST. So last year, the university told us that we have to check from September, October. We were already like getting stressed, you know, but actually the pop-up announcement came actually beginning of even February. But I would personally say starting January, always make sure that once a week, maybe you check the website because the applications, when they're gonna be on, it will be a one month period in which you can apply and make sure that you send in your documents. Make sure that when you send in your applications it has everything already in because as it is mentioned also here in these rules of the Erasmus things, once you send in your file you cannot complete it. So let's say maybe you forgot to pull also add there another abstract, you cannot sadly add it after. So once you send in your documents, double check it, triple check it, make sure everything is correct because you cannot go back. Now talking about what documents you need, I'm gonna also again link down below like also the link so you can check it. So all of these documents that I'm posting right here, you have to put them in one PDF. It's going to be named with your full name and the year that you're currently in, but all of these instructions are written also in the PDF, so don't worry about it. So the first step will be that you will have to follow, of course, instructions in the PDF and you're going to apply. After this, you're going to have to wait for the results. They will send you an email with your score. If you get accepted, you will get an interview in which from the best to the last, so from the best course to the last course, you will be able to choose your university. And one thing that you need to know is that when you're going to choose, let's say I'm the third person, okay? from 50 people of course that means that I'll have kind of a space everywhere to choose so I can choose France Germany Italy Turkey whatever but let's say you choose Turkey and then if you stay on call on the interview till the end but you want to switch it up you can still switch up your space as long as there's still spots at other places so let's say you chose Antalya but then by the end of the interview you actually want to switch to Izmir and there's still spots at Izmir you can still change but once that interview is done that's your spot and you cannot change it anymore make sure that you're already know what's your first, second and third option. I would say to have prepared three options because you never know. So for example, my options was actually first Antalya, then Izmir and then had another university from uh, Turkey. I took Antalya but then I switched up and I went to Izmir and it was the best choice ever to actually switch up to Izmir. So you know, things always work out the way they have to work out. And don't worry, wherever you end up, it will be amazing. Until now, all my friends from Erasmus, they have only said good things about it. It is a very nice experience and and I really recommend it and oh my god guys it's so exciting so please go into Erasmus. When you choose universities how can you get higher on that list okay so because for example Antalya has seven spots for dentistry only, Izmir has only two spots for dentistry so how can you get there because you have to be in the top 20 you know in order to be able to have whatever spot secured to be able to get more points guys there's a few things that you can do one of them is that you can be a demonstrator guys go be a demonstrator okay in our university UMFST just contact whichever department you're interested in and go be a demonstrator it's not even that hard actually you don't even do that many things and also though it helps you to learn more about the subject that you're going to when you're a demonstrator you will get 10% more from your points so let's say I have 90 points already from everything 
summed up. And if I'm a demonstrator, that means I'll get extra nine points. And it is crazy. You can also just be for one semester, for one year, does not matter because that just secures your spot, guys. Second thing you can do is that you can write abstracts. How can you write abstracts and all of these more details will come up in the next video because I'm going to make also a video about that. But for shorters, an abstract means that you participate in a congress that allows students abstracts and you will present it. You'll be a basically an active participant. Then for this, for being an author, you get three points. For a being a co-author, you get one point. So I'll give an example. I uh, wrote an abstract and I also had my friend that helped me with some few things. So I put her as a co-author. That automatically gave her a point and also gave me three points. And she was also kind enough to let me help her with her abstract. So she also made me a co-author in her paper. So I automatically got a point from there as well. So I would suggest you to have as many prime authors uh, papers as you can. You can put, I think, up to three. And then also co-authors. Ask your friend, hey, can I help you with something in your paper? And then, you know, maybe you can write me as a co-author. That will lead you, like, will get you another extra point. And guys, in Erasmus, each point counts. So try to be a co-author and try to be an author as well, because this is very important. Also, another thing, if you participate in Romania in the congresses, you get a certain amount of points. But if you participate outside of Romania in congresses, you will get extra points for that. So if you know any student congresses outside of Romania, go ahead, guys, and participate because you will be good. And even leaving this Erasmus aside, this all of these abstracts that you're writing and everything, besides helping you to get better in whatever you're writing it about, it will also help you in your CV. So in your future career, this is very important. Also, if you want to do a PhD. And the third one, and it's the most easy, but at the same time, the hardest, is to just increase your grades. Because the biggest factor in all of these points, it is actually your sum up of the first years in university, like basically your previous years in university. And if you have good grades, that will, of course, put you in a higher spot. So as a little sum up, go be a demonstrator, guys. It is very easy. Just email whatever teacher you like or like whatever department you want and then go be a demonstrator, write abstracts and get your grades up. I want to go back a little bit to the steps. So what you have to do, you have to apply. After you're going to have to wait for your results, you're going to have an interview, choose your spot. But once you chose that spot, that's when the fun part starts, okay? I thought, and my friend, that that was the hardest thing ever to get there. No, the hard part starts then. Fourth step will be that you have to contact your university and you have to write your learning agreement. When you contact the university, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry guys, my battery died. Okay, we're back. The Erasmus department from university will help you to get the first contact with them. And after that, you have to be in full contact with them. You will have to send an application form to them with all your data, all your stuff from it. Then you will have to make your learning agreement, which is the hardest part, but it is not impossible. You have to ask that university for a syllabus or subject list. See what subjects they have that can match with your subject. And then you have to choose them. For example, I left in fifth year. So for my first semester, I had to choose surgery, orthodontics, endodontics, like a lot of stuff. So I saw what they have and I merged them. You can take subjects from any year from their university because it's not going to be the same. For example, even though in Romania I'm fifth year, here in Turkey I'm studying with third, fourth and fifth. So I have subjects with all three of these. So once I had all of my subjects, I wrote them on the learning agreement and then I had to go search for Erasmus coordinator from my university. For Trgumures, it is Dr. Stoik Alexandra. Find her and she will sign your learning agreement. And then once she accepts it and like, you know, both universities sign it, then that's okay, you're good. You can go book your ticket. Everything is fine. But that takes a second. Like it took close to one month for us. Don't get stressed, guys. Just make sure that you're insistent. If you're in, for example, in Turkey, okay, people move slow. We're going to just put it out there, okay? No tea, no shade. We love them, but they do move slow. And we were waiting, like we sent an email. We had to wait for like one week for them to respond and they were not responding. And what do we do? I texted them on Instagram, guys. And then what did I do? I text them again. Like you just have to keep texting them, call them, do everything. And to be honest, they answered me on Instagram and then they gave me the WhatsApp and then it was a faster communication. So sometimes maybe that's the way to go. Make sure that you don't just wait up. Because for example, for us, we had to send a learning agreement by 29th of June and things were not moving and it was already like 12th of June. Like I was getting stressed. My friend was getting stressed. I was like, what is this? Are we even going to go in Erasmus at this point? And then in the end, we managed it and it was good and we're here and we're happy. Okay, once your leg agreement and everything is signed, then you will be able to come here. And then once you are here, guys, we will maybe do another video with like all the details you need to know when you move to another place. One last thing that you have to do before you're done and you can leave, you have to sign your financial contract because Erasmus does provide you with an amount of money per month. And you have to do this at your Erasmus office. You have to put a few documents together, send it to them, and they will tell you a date and a time when to come to sign it. It has to be at least one month before you're leaving. And the only thing that you don't have already 
from all the documents you already put together before is that you have to also take a bank uh, statement where it shows your bank account number and also you will have to do a declaration at the notary office where uh, somebody has to declare for you that in case of anything happens to you somebody will pay back Erasmus in case you're running away with the money or something like this. But you can get more information about this from your Erasmus office, so make sure you're emailing them or get in contact with them and they will provide you with all the information you need. One thing that I want to add is the places where you can go if you're in dentistry. Uh, so you can go to France in Lyon, but you have to know that the study language there is French. You can go in Portugal, in Porto, and it's in Portuguese as well. Then you have Turkey, where all of Turkey is in English, so that's why I chose English, Turkey, because it's with English. Then you can go to Hungary, where they have a few places in Hungary, and in Budapest you can also choose English, and that's pretty much it for dentistry. So Hungary, Turkey, France, and Portugal. But for German medicine, there's way more I'm going to put here the list. It's also Germany, also Italy a lot, but also know that a lot of them, though, are in the country's language, but some are also in English. Especially for Turkey, I will help you with some other stuff. But if you have any other questions, don't hesitate, guys. You can text me on Instagram. You can also just comment here on this YouTube channel and here for you guys I want to help you be able to go in Erasmus. It is an amazing experience. Please go ahead and do it Also, I was slightly hesitant. I wanted to also go for one semester only because I have so many good friends back home that are sixth year and I'm really sad like, like that I will go back and they will not be there anymore and I really wanted to spend time with them but at the same time it wasn't an option for me to only go for one semester because a lot of the subjects didn't match so that is also a thing I had to only go for directly one year or not at all but I took it and it is a very nice experience and it's really lovely so I would really 100% recommend it from the bottom of my heart that you go to Erasmus don't forget to like this video if you liked it and I will see you in the next one bye guys